I did a continuous glucose monitor CGM experiment. So why is your blood glucose important? We need to keep blood sugar levels within a safe range to reduce the risk of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, dementia, and many other health conditions. We need stable blood glucose levels that are between 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter or 3.9 to 5.5 millimolars per liter when fasted and less than 130 milligrams per deciliter or 7.2 millimolars per liter after meals. For this experiment, I will use a continuous glucose monitor from Freestyle Libre and test as many foods as I can. CGM shows your blood glucose levels in real time. To make this experiment as accurate as I can, I will follow my regular lifestyle. I will wake up and go to sleep around the same time. Avoid excess stress. Don't do any unusual activities. I'll stick with my regular walks once in the morning, once after lunch, and once after dinner. There will be three days of keto. I will show the photos of meals, grams of carbs in some of the foods, and show how it affected my blood glucose levels. And I will show in both, in millimolars per liter and milligrams per deciliter, as I know my viewers are from all over the world. I started my experiment with my regular diet, a healthy, low-carb, high-fat, moderate-protein ketogenic diet. Let's see how it affects my blood glucose levels what happens to your blood glucose levels and energy levels when you reduce your carbs to around 50 or 60 grams of carbs a day. And I will test foods such as bulletproof coffee, dark chocolate, non-starchy vegetables. I will test meat, butter, cheese, fish, berries, and kefir. I started my blood glucose experiment on the 10th of February with the first keto day. I received my CGM around 5 p.m. and my first blood glucose reading was 3.8 millimolars per liter or 68.4 milligrams per deciliter. That's a bit low, but that's probably because my body uses ketones instead of glucose as its primary source of fuel, and it needs less glucose. As I got my glucose monitor later on in the day, here's what I ate so far this day. I had a keto coffee with butter and coconut oil, stevia sweetener, and a piece of dark 90% cacao chocolate. And the same again a bit later, before lunch. Then some non-starchy vegetables, half an avocado, nuts and cheese with a can of sardines for lunch. So then at 17.44, just before dinner, I had some cheese. My blood glucose reading before cheese was 4.4 millimolars per liter or 79.2 milligrams per deciliter. Then 18.05, before dinner, it was 4.7 or 84.6. So for dinner, I had 100 grams of organic beef mince with parsley and garlic, fried in grass-fed butter, with 140 grams of steamed calettes or kale sprouts, with some extra butter added on top half of an orange pepper, and a chia pudding with chia seeds, organic plain kefir, and stevia. My blood glucose readings after one hour, 4.4 millimolars per liter or 79 milligrams per deciliter. Two hours after the meal, 3.9 millimolars per liter or 70.2 milligrams per deciliter. Then the glucose peak, a bit more than two hours after the meal. It was 5.1 millimolars per liter or 91.8 milligrams per deciliter. Then soon after, in about 20 minutes, I was back to 4.2 or 75.6, and it remained stable for the rest of the evening. How well did this meal do? I would say pretty well. With the highest peak at 5.1, that's like someone's fasting blood glucose reading. I had a high-fat, moderate-protein, low-carb keto meal with around 522 calories and 13.6 grams of non-starchy carbs. And I had a total of 2,097 calories this day. My macros were 70% carbs, 77% fat, and 16% protein. I had 33.4 grams of carbs, and my blood glucose was nice and stable for the whole day. My average glucose for the day was 4.3 or 77.4. Then the next day, the 11th of February, was my second keto day. My fasting blood glucose at 7.14 was 4.8 millimolars per liter or 86.4 milligrams per deciliter. I checked it again before breakfast at 8.18. It was 5.6 or 108. Then for breakfast, I had a keto coffee and dark chocolate. 
I've been having the same keto breakfast for around four years. A bulletproof keto coffee with dark chocolate with 85 to 90% cacao. Yes, it has some carbs, but the amount is really small. It has 4.1 grams of carbs per serving. It's time to see how it actually affects my blood glucose levels. So at 8.37, it was 5.7 or 102.6. It was the highest peak. Well, not too bad. Then I felt like I have a lot of energy and decided to go for a run. I ran for around 12 minutes with high intensity intervals. Then I came home, checked my glucose and it was 3.7 or 66.6. High intensity training resulted in hypoglycemia. Very interesting. But then I checked it again in 5 minutes and it was back to 4.4 or 79.2. Then 10.30, I had another keto coffee with chocolate. And at this point, my glucose was 5.9 or 106.2. That's quite high, but still in optimal ranges. One hour after the coffee, five millimolars per liter or 90 milligrams per deciliter. Then I started feeling hungry and had a third keto coffee, just without the chocolate. My glucose was 4.5 or 81. Then I checked again before lunch at 12.27. It was 4.3 or 77.4. For lunch, I had a half of an orange bell pepper, five cucumber slices, four cherry tomatoes, one tablespoon of kimchi, six pecans, two slices of gouda cheese, three slices of goat cheese, and one can of sardines. Then I went for a walk, and it peaked 40 minutes after the meal, reaching 6.6 or 118.8 which is my highest result so far, but still in the optimal range. One hour after the meal, 5.2 or 93.6. Then another peak after an hour, 6.4 or 115.2. Three hours after the meal, 5.2 or 93.6. Four hours after the meal, 4.7 or 84.6. Then 1842, before dinner, it's five or 90. For dinner, I had 100 grams of organic pork with fresh thyme, fried in butter, together with 100 grams of steamed asparagus with butter and with 7 cherry tomatoes. And I had a green smoothie with mixed berries, lemon, spinach and stevia. And I had a chia dessert with kefir, stevia and berries. 40 minutes after the meal, it reached 6.1 or 109. Then one hour after the meal, it was 5.7 or 102.6. Two hours after the meal, 5.4 or 97.2. Then three hours after the meal, the peak of 6.3 millimolars per liter or 113.4 milligrams per deciliter. That's still pretty good, staying within optimal ranges. And then four hours after, 4.7 or 84.6. So the second keto day was completed. I was feeling full of energy, I would get hungry just before my meal times, and the average glucose was 4.9 or 88.2. Then let's move to the next day, 12th of February. It was my third keto day. So first glucose test at 7.31 is 6.4 or 115.2. That's a bit strange. It looks like I woke up with diabetes. But then the next time I checked in 7 minutes, it was 4.8 or 86.4. It might be the down phenomenon, where you get high glucose readings early hours in the morning due to a spike in cortisol. Cortisol spikes your blood glucose. Then at 8.31, I had my regular keto coffee with chocolate and my glucose was at 4.7 or 84.6. And after one hour, it was 5.3 or 95.4. Then two hours after coffee, it was 4.3 or 77.4. And I'm having my second coffee with chocolate. Then before eating at 12.42, my glucose was 4.6 or 82.8. For lunch, I had a salad with mixed salad leaves, radish, tomatoes, kimchi, olive oil, cheese and sardines, and a chia pudding with cranberries. Then after around one hour while walking, I had a peak. My blood glucose was at 5.7 or 102.6. That's still in the optimal range. Then in 30 minutes, it was 4.3 or 77.4. And I had another coffee, this time with organic double cream, stevia, and one teaspoon of MCT oil. 
so around 3 hours after the meal. It was 4.7 or 84.6 and I was feeling great and not hungry at all. Then before dinner at 18.08, it was 4.3 millimolars per liter or 77.5 milligrams per deciliter. Then for dinner I had half an avocado, mixed salad leaves, half of a red bell pepper and some cherry tomatoes, together with red onion and mushrooms, fried in butter, and some extra virgin olive oil and lemon juice. And I had 100 grams of organic beef fried in butter, together with oven baked crochets with olive oil, and a serving of plain organic Greek yogurt with stevia. So one hour after the meal, it was 3.9 or 70.2. Two hours after the meal, 4.1 or 73.8. Three hours after the meal, 4.6 or 82.8. And four hours after the meal, 4.7 or 84.4. So this meal had a very small glucose response. The highest peak was somewhere around 5 millimolars per liter. So my average glucose this day was 4.5 millimolars per liter or 81 milligrams per deciliter. So this was the end of the third keto day. And my conclusion about keto, you don't need to eat carbs for your body to have stable blood glucose levels. So with these small amounts of carbs, I'm having optimal blood glucose levels and I feel great. I'm full of energy and I can go long periods of time without eating. And of course, continuous glucose monitoring device won't show you how different foods affect your insulin levels. However, you can use this insulin index table as a guideline to see how different foods affect your insulin levels. Keep in mind that many low GI foods, foods such as wholemeal bread or brown rice are low glycemic index foods that are even recommended for diabetics. And sadly, these foods are some of the worst on the insulin index scale, meaning it causes huge insulin spikes. So take blood glucose readings with a grain of salt and keep in mind that it shows you only half of the equation. A CGM helps you to learn about how different foods affect your body so that you could make healthier food choices in the future. The best way to know how your body will respond to certain foods is to measure it. I highly recommend you to try out using this continuous glucose monitoring device for two weeks. That's all you need to experiment. Try out as many foods as you can and have the actual results showing how your body responds to it. And you don't have to be diabetic to try using CGM, this continuous glucose monitoring device. Why to wait until you get diabetes if you can learn about different foods and even prevent yourself from getting diabetes? So if you're interested in trying out this device, I'll leave the link in the description below where you can order a CGM continuous glucose monitor that will change the way you see food. And if you've enjoyed watching this video and learned something new, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Also, feel free to support my YouTube channel by buying me a coffee or signing up for my Patreon.